on opening new grammar schools in England. Secretary of State. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. As the Prime Minister have said, has said, this government is committed to building a country that works for everyone, not just the privileged few. And we believe that every person should have the opportunity to fulfil their potential, no matter what their background or where they're from. Education is at the heart of this ambition. We inherited a system from the last Labour government, however, where far too many children left school without the qualifications or the skills they needed to be successful in life. And our far-reaching reforms over the last six years have changed this, strengthening school leadership, improving standards of behaviour in our classrooms and ensuring children are taught to read more effectively, improving maths teaching in primary schools. And as a result, there are now 1.4 million more pupils in schools rated as good or outstanding than in 2010. This means more young people are being given the opportunity to access better teaching and to maximise their potential. This is what we want for all children and where we're continuing, how we're continuing our reforms so that every child can have the best possible start in life. It's why we're doubling free childcare to 30 hours for working parents of three and four year olds. And as I said in July, on the issue of academic selection, I'm open-minded because we can't rule anything out that could help us grow opportunity for all and give more people the chance to do well in life. <laughs> the landscape for schools has changed hugely in the last 10, 20, 30 years. We now have a whole variety of educational offers available. There'll be no return to the simplistic binary choice of the past where schools separate children into winners and losers, successes or failures. This government wants to focus on the future, to build on our success since 2010 and to create a truly 21st century school system. But we want a system that can cater for the talent and the, in and the abilities of every single child. So to achieve that, we need a truly diverse range of schools and specialisms. We need more good schools in more areas of the country responding to the needs of every child, regardless of their background. We're looking at a range of options, and I expect any new proposals to focus on what we can do to help everyone to go as far as their own individual talents and capacity heart for hard work will take them. Education and policy to that end will be set in due course. Yeah. Angela Rayner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Wow. wow. Um, despite that waffle, the cat oh. is finally out of the bag. The government has revealed their plans for new grammar schools in England, but not, not in this house, Mr. Speaker. We didn't even hear the word grammar then, but through leaks to the press and at a private meeting of the members opposite, so much for the One Nation government that we were promised. So will the Secretary of State promise today that future such announcements will be made here so that we can give the policy the scrutiny it so badly needs? And perhaps she can tell us the evidence base for it today. Has she read the IFS report entry into grammar schools in England? If so, perhaps she remembers the conclusion that, uh, that among high achievers, those who are eligible for free school meals or live in poorer neighbourhoods are significantly less likely to go to grammar school. The, OC, the OECD, the Sutton Trust and even the government's own social mobility czar and their chief inspector of schools have all cited the evidence against this policy. And in Kent, where we have grammar schools, the attainment gap is far wider than it is elsewhere. So can she tell the House what evidence she has to support her belief that grammar schools will help disadvantaged children and close the attainment gap? Mr Speaker, at a time when our schools are facing a crisis in teacher recruitment and retention with the thousands taught in super-sized classes and schools facing real-term cuts to their budget for the first time in nearly two decades, pushing ahead with grammar schools shows a dangerous misunderstanding of the real issues facing our schools. And can the Secretary of State tell us what she will be doing to address the real real problems that are facing our schools today. The Prime Minister has said this policy is justified because we already have social selection. 
Quite how making things worse by bringing back grammar schools as a solution remains a mystery. Perhaps the Secretary of State can tell us why she is ensuring that all children don't get a decent education. This policy will not help social mobility, Mr Speaker, but will entrench inequality and disadvantage. It will be the lucky few who can afford the tuition who will get ahead and the disadvantage that will be left behind. A policy for the few at the expense of the many. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, I was told that the Tories know the cost of everything and the value of nothing. I don't even think they know that anymore. Finally, Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister promised to lead a one nation government. She said her policy would be led by the evidence and she claimed that she would govern for the disadvantaged and not the privileged few. Yet this policy fails on every single count. It may be a new Prime Minister, Mr Speaker, but the same old nasty Tories. Yeah.